This is the news, reported by Chet Huntley and David Brinkley. An Apollo 11 mission control officer said tonight in Houston that the astronauts' walk on the moon could conceivably take place three and a half hours sooner than scheduled. If it does, that would have them walking on the moon before midnight Sunday, Eastern Time. The Apollo 11 crew, meanwhile, still speaking only when spoken to, sped past the halfway mark to the moon on a mission which continues to be faultless. Shortly after noon, Eastern Time, they fired a three-second burst from the command ship's main engine to refine their aim for the moon by 132 miles. Astronaut Aldrin did remark that through binoculars he could see sunset over the eastern Mediterranean, the green of England, a little haze over northern Italy, and he added that a rain cloud over Houston would have a short life. In Washington, President Nixon announced a new feature in the mission of Apollo 11. Our astronauts will be taking with them the flags of the 50 states and a number of other items of great interest which they will bring back. They will also be taking with them the medals that were given to three of our astronauts who were killed in the Apollo flight. And they will leave on the moon the patches from those medals. They also will be taking with them two other medals. When Frank Borman was in the Soviet Union, he was presented two medals from the wives of the cosmonauts the Russian cosmonauts, who lost their lives in their space program. And at the request of their wives, he will leave those medals on the moon. And I think this symbolic act of leaving on the moon, in the one case, the aspects of the medals that those who lost their lives in our space program and the medals of the Soviet cosmonauts indicates the true spirit of the American armed forces. We maintain strength, but we maintain it because we want peace. Peace with all countries. The Soviets broke their silence on Luna 15. Moscow said the spacecraft went into orbit around the moon this morning to become the moon's new artificial satellite. That indicated the Russians were not going for a moon landing. But Sir Bernard Lovell, director of Britain's Jodro Bank Observatory, thinks the Soviets will try to land Luna 15 on the moon and then direct it to bring back some moon samples. Well, they're more than halfway there. And from all reports, the astronauts of Apollo 11 are enjoying the trip. This part of their flight to the moon is probably the least demanding. The spacecraft is on a long and, in space-age terms, a leisurely coast to the moon. There has been plenty of time for astronauts Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins to enjoy the view. Their destination is not in sight, but they have been able to look back at the planet called Earth. For a report on what's happened today in the flight of Apollo 11, here is ABC science editor Jules Bergman. Just before reaching the half mark of the moon, Neil Aldrin and Collins fired their onboard engine, aiming Apollo 11 so it will pass 69 miles behind the moon midday Saturday. This first test of the onboard engine, which has to lower them into lunar orbit and then boost them home again, worked perfectly. It's been a quiet day coasting to the moon with the crew busy in navigational checks, taking still pictures, doing weather forecasting, and plain old housekeeping in their 11 by 13 foot spacecraft. Command module pilot Mike Collins got stuck with most of it. I've been very busy so far. I'm looking for it taking the afternoon off. I've been uh, cooking and uh, sweeping and almost sewing and, and you know, the usual little housekeeping things. The water temperature has been good. Do you, are you getting hot water? So I made three cups of coffee today. Uh, it, it's pretty good. It's not piping hot, but it's, uh, it sure beats uh, stone cold coffee. My well, is the chef, and now it's them, and it is outstanding. Right, you understand uh, that's the salad salmon over? Something like that, salmon salad. At 7.32 p.m. Eastern Time tonight, the second live color telecast from Apollo 11 is scheduled. ABC News will bring it to you live beginning at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. All going well, with Armstrong and Aldrin still targeted to land on the moon at 4.19 p.m. Sunday afternoon. This is Jules Bergman at ABC Space Headquarters. Luna 15, the Russian moon rocket, is now in orbit around the moon. 
The announcement in Moscow seemed to imply that no landing attempt will be made, but in Britain, Sir, Bar Sir Bernard Lovell of the Jodrell Bank Observatory said he believes the Russians will try to put their unmanned machine on the lunar surface tomorrow morning. The flight of Luna 15 has reminded everybody of the space race competition that still exists between the United States and the Soviet Union. But at the White House today, President Nixon made an announcement that stressed cooperation rather than competition. The president spoke during a ceremony honoring the retiring chief of staff of the Air Force, General John McConnell. Our astronauts will be taking with them the flags of the 50 states and a number of other items of great interest which they will bring back. They will also be taking with them the medals that were given to three of our astronauts who were killed in the Apollo flight. And they will leave on the moon the patches from those medals. They also will be taking with them two other medals. When Frank Barman was in the Soviet Union, he was presented two medals from the wives of the cosmonauts, the Russian cosmonauts, who lost their lives in their space program. And at the request of their wives, he will leave those medals on the moon. And I think this symbolic act of leaving on the moon, in the one case, the aspects of the medals that those who lost their lives in our space program and the medals of the Soviet cosmonauts indicates the true spirit of the American armed forces. We maintain strength, but we maintain it because we want peace. Peace with all countries.